out of y'all around the wheel here and lately a lot of us over on the round cord the round the wheel discord link in the description if you want to join it a lot of us a lot of us over there have been quite quite heavily balatro pilled lately a lot of talk about this game so much in fact that we had to cordon it off on its own channel which means you know it's quite a big deal and i am not very far into this game i am only currently working my way through the second highest difficulty rating out of like eight or so and so i figured as long as i'm not very far into this game why not show off the road to the highest difficulty uh, why not take that journey together uh, the highest difficulty rating being gold stake which i will talk more about shortly but this is balatro it came out back in around february of this year or so and imagine if the person running the command center in your brain stretched their fingers out in like a horrific rictus trying to press all the pleasure centers of your brain at once that's kind of what Baltro tries to do and i'll be damned if it doesn't get pretty close uh it's a it's a poker game there's poker hands but it's also got deck building elements roguelike elements there aren't just playing cards in it there are many different types of cards matter of fact if it's ever a kind of card that's existed it's probably in this game to some extent but this episode is just going to be this is an episode zero you don't have to watch this one if you know about balatro already this is just going to be a crash course for anybody who does not know about balatro to any extent because once we get started um unlike most times when i film a series on youtube uh i am going to assume that you already have knowledge of the game uh so this is a crash course that's here for anybody that doesn't know about the game who just wants to get familiar with the basics real quick so they can kind of follow along once i start really ripping through it uh we're not going to play an entire run right now i'm only going to show you probably probably a few rounds at most um and it's going to move really slowly if you're used to balatro um, people who are really into this game tend to run it at very high speeds because once you start playing run after run after run, uh, the normal game speed is just glacial, sluggish, molasses running uphill. So for now, it's going to move very slowly, but once we get into it with episode one proper, it's going to move very quick and... You know either you follow it or you don't uh i think most people will choose to follow it though because this is a very fun game not just to play but to backseat as well so we're going to start a new run uh there are several decks uh that you can start from i've already unlocked a few uh but but there are several decks that just you start unlocked uh and each one most of them are colors but some of them are pretty patterns uh and they have their own each deck has its own set of i have a few that are locked but we're mostly going to concentrate on the unlocked ones for now each deck has its own advantages and disadvantages that you that either help you out during a run or you have to play around the disadvantages and white stake base difficulty uh, no real no real impediment to us soaring to the stratosphere right now it's we we are pretty pretty free pretty wide open uh but this is this is the red deck this is the most basic deck you start with it gives you plus one discard every round i believe three is the default amount of discards you get in a round this gives you four and being able to discard is very important so that's a very good advantage we are going to do a few hands with the red deck here now we're going to play and we're going to start our run now each uh now there are eight antis in the game uh or in any given run uh we are starting out naturally on anti one uh you can go beyond anti eight but beating the eighth anti is considered winning the run and that's what we're going to do with each one uh in this series uh we are just going to uh i'm going to show every deck at every level of difficulty just moving on up through white stake red stake green stake and on through up to gold stake so this is Balatro Road to Gold Stake. Um, and when you beat the eighth ante, you win the run. We may go beyond that in some cases, endless mode. See what antes 9, 10, sometimes 11 have to offer. But as long as you beat the eighth ante, you win the run. Uh, you start off with four hands. 
that you can play in each round and normally it would be three discards but we have plus one because we're playing red deck and four dollars to spend in the shop we will see the shop very shortly and each ante consists of three blinds the small blind the big blind and the boss blind so small blind you have to make at least this many chips each card that you play that is scored will give you a certain amount of chips and we have to reach at least 300 in the first round. small blind you got to get a few chips big blind you got to get a few more and then the boss blind there is usually some major disadvantage that you have to work around in this case uh the pillar that that can be kind of a nasty one at times cards played previously in this ante get debuffed that means they won't count for any score any special abilities they have will be ignored so if we've played a card in this run that means it's going to get uh ignored for score so we're gonna have to play around that and we can also skip blinds if we want sometimes that will sometimes that will give us a nice little prize most of the time i don't do it but if the prize is that good i will sometimes skip a blind but for the most part we're here to play some some poker some very weird poker um we have some uh so we have some areas at the top of the playing mat the playing field where certain permanent cards will sit and confer certain effects but let's see what we've got here this is pretty simple looks like we've got a good shot at a flush draw right now so you can play any classic poker hand that you choose uh, i'm going to make it simple for this first one we're just going to play a pair now any any time you have a legal hand it shows up over here so we have a pair at level one we can level up our hands to get more chips but there are two numbers below every hand blue is the amount of chips the the base amount of chips that that hand will give you and then the red number is the multiplier so we will get a times two multiplier on any chips that we earn and then so this is the base amount of chips and then every card that we play will be scored so aces are worth 11 chips each so that'll be 32 times two so 10 21 32 if i play a pair i'll get six, a pair of aces i'll get 64 chips so play the hand it adds it up for you plus 11 plus 11 32 times 2 is 64 we're 64 chips on the way to our 300 so we've got actually i was going to go for the flush draw but it looks like we have a straight just fall into our lap right here that's not so bad uh let's go ahead and take that a straight is worth 30 base chips with a times four multiplier even better and that's five cards that'll get scored so that's a lot 10 10 9 8 and 7 so that's going to add up to 40 50 59 67 74 times 4 is 329 296 but that gets us over the 300 limit so we didn't have to do any discarding that's very nice so we get a little bit of money you know just some money for winning the blind and then some money for each hand that we have left the sooner you can win a blind the better so we're going to cash out we're going to cash out we're going to take our nine bucks to the shop between rounds you get to visit the shop every round they'll have something new for you so in this little slot they'll just have an assortment of things uh this is a tarot card tarot cards will usually buff up your cards in some way by allowing them to get more chips um or allowing them to have a multiplier or switching their their rank or their suit around uh, in this case strength would increase the rank of up to two cards of our choosing by one so we could turn like a six into a seven uh, or a jack into a queen if we needed to uh pretty useful for sealing the deal on something like a straight generally or or just any hand that you're not quite there uh strength is not a bad one uh, but here, here is the real PA stay resistance of the game right here. The Jokers. The Jokers are the main way that you're going to increase your chip counts. Uh, there are many, many, many kinds of Jokers. I think there are around 300 Jokers in the entire game. This one in particular right here, this is the Vampire. It would gain a 0.1 multiplier per scoring enhanced card played. Enhanced card would be like it's a bonus card that gives you more chips or it has a multiplier or it's like a glass card or a steel card there are many different kinds of card enhancements but it would give us a multiplier and then it would take that enhancement off the card 
Currently, it's at a times one multiplier, which obviously does nothing for our score. But if we were to play a lot of enhanced cards and have the vampire, you know, metaphorically suck their blood, we could really pump that multiplier. And that would help our score scale up nicely. Uh, there are also vouchers you can buy uh, that get you... So this would go minus one ante, but we would also get one less hand per round. So we would, we would go down one ante. But we would also, but we would also have one less hand. So, so we would have more time to get a good board state going, but we would have fewer hands to achieve that board state. Kind of a trade-off. Vouchers are always 10 bucks unless you're saving money. We don't quite have 10 bucks right now, but there are also booster packs in the shop. So for those of you that play, you know, Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Lorcana, you know, pick your poison. But this game scratches the pack cracking itch too, which is part of why I love it so much. Uh, we can afford either one of these packs right now. Uh, an Arcana pack will give us a tarot card, uh, a jumbo, and there are sizes of packs as well. Uh, the buffoon pack is a standard, so it would only have two cards in it. But jumbo packs have five cards that you can choose from. Mega packs have five and you can choose two of them. Uh, and there are different other different kinds of packs as well. Maybe we'll see some of them, maybe we won't. But we will almost certainly see them once the run gets going. But I'm going to go ahead. I don't really want the Vampire. So I'm going to take my chances with the Joker, with the Buffoon pack. I'm going to see what it offers me. So I have two Jokers I can choose from here. Uh, I have the red card. It gains a plus three multiplier whenever I skip a booster pack. If I decide that everything in this pack is dookie, I can click the skip button here. And if I do, if I choose to willingly skip the contents of a pack, it will add a multiplier to this Joker. Uh, this one uh, will create a tarot card for us, the Vagabond. Creates a tarot card if a hand is played with $4 or less. So if I could spend some money, perhaps, uh, let's go ahead. I will take the Vagabond because creating tarot cards can really put you in a good situation. We have $5 left here. I'd like to get to this voucher, uh, if I could. I've never seen Anti-Zero before. It is possible to play Anti-Zero if you get this voucher on Anti-1. Kind of like going to the Minus world. Uh, the minimum blinds are even smaller. It's kind of crazy, so I hear. I've never personally done it. Uh, Dalia's done it, I think. Friend of mine. But I'm going to go ahead and buy Strength 2. I'm going to have that here for a rainy day. So we bought everything we want to buy from the shop. We're going to go next round. So this is the big blind. We got to get at least 450 chips. So what have we got here? Looks like we are pretty well set up for a straight draw. This is exactly what I was talking about with strength. So four, five, six, uh, I can increase two cards. Let's see, or I could play a pair of aces. A pair of aces, not very high. Uh, let's see. So I have less than $4. So that should create a tarot card for us no matter what hand I play. So we got five, six, five, six, seven. I, I, I can only change two cards ranks. So we're kind of close, but we're not there. We could also lean into a flush draw because we've got three spades and three clubs in our hand. We could go for one of those flushes. I think at the moment, I'm just gonna play a pair to get the tarot card. I think that's how it will work. So not very spectacular, but we had less than $4 in our bank account. So that gave us a tarot card, a magician. And look at that, there's our straight draw right there. So what I could do if I wanted, I would normally reserve this for a rainy day, but it's nice to show off how these things work in practice. So I'm gonna take my newly formed magician that the Vagabond gave me, and I'm going to enhance two of my cards, my nine and my eight. Uh, that will The magician will turn them into lucky cards. Um, which means once they're scored, there's a one in five chance that they'll give me a plus 20 multiplier, which would really pump my score up, or a one in 15 chance to win $20. Uh, don't know that I'll ever hit that, but you know, having more money to spend in the shop is certainly nice. And any chance is better than none at all. So I'm gonna make those cards lucky, and I'm gonna go ahead and play this straight and have them scored. So let's go ahead and play the hand. Should get a fair few chips off of that. We did not get any multipliers, I don't believe. And once again, uh, less than $5 in the bank, so the Vagabond made a tarot card for us. Turns up to three selected cards into hearts. Well, how about that? We have three hearts in our hand. 
we can turn we can turn a bunch of them into into hearts and yes that is a permanent that is a permanent change that means we now have two sevens of hearts in our hand and if we look at our i think it's in run info let me see uh where's the full no this is our we can view the deck we no longer have a seven of diamonds in our deck because i turned it into a seven heart i now have more hearts than i do diamonds and you can manipulate your deck in that way and it can lead to some quite interesting results but i'm gonna go ahead and play the flush draw here uh go ahead yeah run it that should get us over the top i think 10 9 7 7 and 3 that's 71 chips times 4 that gives us a tower which will give us a stone card which has its own uses all right so we got 450 chips we cleared that hurdle quite easily one hand left we got five bucks so we're back to seven bucks we can spend money in the store again temperance one of my favorite tarot cards gives the max well it wouldn't be so great in this case because we only have one joker gives the total sell value of all current jokers uh, which is currently four dollars uh, so I would be spending three dollars to get four but and I can also sell these if I like if I don't have any particular desire or use for them so in this case even just having a one dollar profit would allow me to get both of these packs uh, or we could buy this here so this is a planet card planet cards come in celestial packs and planet cards help level up your hand like in this case I would be leveling up my straight flush. Um, that's a little more complex, complex than I think we want to do right now. And we have incentive to spend a lot of money and make tarot cards um, so that Joker will make us more so that we can enhance our cards in various ways. So I'm gonna open the Arcana Pack. Arcana Pack gives us uh, a couple of tarot cards to choose from. Uh, Hermit doubles our money, so that's quite excellent. I think I might take that. Um, although just showing off what we can do to our chip counts, I think it might be more apropos to use the Hierophant, but one thing that's nice is if we have consumables up here, we can also use them during this time when we have to use a tarot card immediately. We can also use these right here. So say I don't really have much use for twos. If I want to be a high roller, if I want to make bigger cards, I can take my two and I can use tower to turn it into a stone card. It doesn't have a rank, it doesn't have a suit, it just gives me 50 chips, which, you know, can be kind of nice to throw on to a hand sometimes when when you just want to sweeten the pot. Uh, and that gives us, uh, we can either double our money, spend some more money in the store, uh, or we can turn two of our cards into bonus cards. I would rather turn face cards into bonus cards, so I think I'm going to use Hermit to double our money. That seems to me to be the move right now. And having a lot of money early on can be very, very helpful. Because see, now we can afford the straight flush level up if we want and the celestial pack. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open the celestial pack though. So we get three cards. We choose one. We can choose to level up our flushes, uh, our full houses. I don't play full houses a lot, so I don't. I usually ignore earth cards. Or we can, uh, we can go with Uranus here. We can level up a two pair. In the absence of a sound strategy, two pair is usually what I like to go with. But if I am changing the suits on cards and trying to get more of a certain suit in my deck, maybe flushes would be more advantageous. So I think we're gonna go to Jupiter to get more stupider. So yeah, see, it raises the base amount that we get for playing a flush. Previously, it was 35 times three. 35 chips base amount for a flush with a times three multiplier. Now it's 50 base chips with a times six multiplier. So that incentivizes us to play more flushes. Uh, $4 or less. Okay, we don't have to spend any more money. So he'll make, he'll make stuff for us. So now any card we've been played, we're at the boss blind. This is the big kahuna. Any card that we have been... Uh, that we've played previously is not going to count toward our score. So here we go. See, we've played this ace and this 10 and this five. Uh, can't really, we can still play them. Uh, I could still play like a two pair or a full house. Uh, so it's just that that 10 would not get scored. 
Uh, but it's still more base chips, still more multiplier. So I think we're going to go ahead and do it uh, just to get a good chip count going. That's 80 times four. That gets us over halfway there. 50, 60, 70, 80. See, debuffed, did not count toward our score. But we got death. Uh, death can be very useful. That can make multiples of certain cards in our deck. Like, I can't use this five right now, right? So maybe I think this five is useless to me uh, and I want to turn it into a different card. So with death, select two cards, convert the left card into the right card. So I have two cards selected here. This five that I can't use currently would then turn into a stone card. There we go. And we have a pair here. A pair is not a very flashy hand. Just 10 chips, 10 base chips. But if we throw a couple stone cards on it, suddenly that's 100 chips. So there's a pair, 10, 20, 30, 80, 130. A pair worth 260. I don't think that quite gets, yeah. We can play practically whatever we want at this point. Uh, and in fact, the Hierophant is a great tarot card to get. So, so you see how the Joker is pulling a lot of weight for us. You can have up to five Jokers. And the Jokers can also have effects, like you can have Foil Jokers that give you more chips. You can have Polychrome Jokers that give you a multiplier. Holographic Jokers that, that add to your multiplier. There are plus multipliers and there are times multipliers. Both of them work together to just create points, 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 points. But even just by itself, this Vagabond is doing a lot for us. So imagine how it would be if we had a row of five jokers each playing off each other here that's where balatro gets insane and that's what's so gosh darn lovable about it so let's see um i think we can start affording to use some discards here let's just toss out anything we can't use what do we got here okay we're looking we're staring down the barrel of a straight i like this so let's see if we can't manipulate fate into giving us what we want Two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. That's just rude game. Uh, and the fewer cards we discard in pursuit of that flush draw or that straight draw. Now I'm thinking maybe I want, uh, well, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Two, three, four, five, six. I already have a straight. So why don't I play that? Uh, and normally, I, again, I would not do this with base cards, but let's go ahead and take five enhanced selected cards, two bonus cards. A bonus card gives us 30 extra chips. So let's use our Hierophant. That will just sweeten our score. We didn't need to do that because we're 20 cards away from hitting the hitting the blind requirement. But there we go, there's a straight. 36 and 35 instead of six and five. That's pretty significant. And once again, made us a great, uh, made us a great uh, tarot card here creates up to two random tarot cards it's just producing and producing and producing so there we go we got a big amount of money we got six dollars there's ten bucks we can spend at the store to get a voucher or more jokers a times four multiplier if we play a four of a kind uh or create a tarot card when the blind is selected so we could really lean intensely into tarot this could be a very tarot heavy run um which sounds like a lot of fun to me uh, go ahead and, you know, buy that. Uh, and then, you know, afford another Joker. Get one out of the buffoon pack here. Gives 25 chips for each stone card in your deck. So that would give us incentive to create stone cards. That's really interesting. So we can play these off each other, kind of see where the run goes, you know. Next round, uh, we have to make 800 chips. So we don't have any room in our consumable slot here. So unfortunately, well, we could sell it for money. Let's go ahead and sell it for money so that we can demonstrate these jokers playing off each other. So we select the blind. Cardomancer creates us a joker. Wheel of Fortune, my favorite. A one in four chance to turn one of your jokers foil, holographic or polychrome. Look at, wow, they pretty much dropped a flush right in our lap. So I think we can go ahead and uh, discard what we don't like. I Yeah, we were bound to get a heart off of that somewhere, somewhere in the mix. First of all, let's play Wheel of Fortune because this is, this is something 
that no true Balatro player can avoid. We got a Wheel of Fortune dumped in our lap. Let's play it. One in four chance. Some people swear that it's bugged and it never gives you the effect, but you see, <laughs> you see me doing this run, you will see that I always go for the Wheel of Fortune, just about like 95% of the time. I go for the Wheel of Fortune when I have the chance. Let's spin the wheel. Come on, show me love, baby. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna see that a lot, that nope. In fact, that's what the Balatro channel is called on the Discord, nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy but yeah see now we play our now we play our uh our straight we get the chips off the cards then we'll get a tarot card and we'll get 50 chips and yes we got some fire over here if you see fire on a score count i was hoping that would happen during the tutorial uh if you see fire that means you you made your you made the minimum amount in one hand which is what you're shooting for. You're shooting for crazy interactions like this. Uh, oh, the fool. That gives us another Wheel of Fortune spin. You know what? Why don't we do it before we before we head off here? I think you've got the basics down pretty well if you don't understand it. Uh, next time, we're going to jump right into it feet first with a red deck white stake run, and it's going to get wild and crazy. Let's do it. Nope. <laughs> I know the game is going to be committed to making a fool out of me on camera. Uh, times four multiplier on every sixth hand. That's fun. Uh, ooh, enhances one selected card into a steel card. If we leave a steel card in our hand, it'll give us a multiplier if it stays in our hand at the end of the, when we play the hand. Interesting, and if it stays in like our bottom hand when we play something up here, that is. Uh, so chariots are very good. I like this run. I need to, let's see, run info. Can I get the, can I get the C number off of this run? This is actually, uh, this is actually really cool. Will it tell me that anywhere? Somebody tell me if it'll tell me that somewhere. But, and so on and so forth until we reach the eighth ante. And the game will be moving a lot faster. So it will not take, let's see, we're nearly half an hour in here and <laughs> we're only on ante two. Trust me, it's gonna move a lot faster than that when we start this series proper starting next time let's hit the balatro tables folks and i'll see you all on the road to gold stake <laughs>